This forces me to uh, stand up, sit upright. Yeah, you need to work on your posture. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to Rose Bibles and Beer. It's episode 223. Thanks for clapping. Yes. Zach, how you doing? I applaud this scenario. <laughs> Andy? We're all wearing black shirts. <laughs> we are. And we matter. Jeff? I'm a uh, fan stinking You can't keep... No, nope, that doesn't count. A 10. <laughs> Yeah. I got it in just under the wire. No, so, it doesn't count. It doesn't count because you used it last week. I did, so you can't repeat being great. I am fantastic. Wow. Wow. Jeff's great again, guys. Oh, great. I'm jolly. Just shove it down and never bring it up. What are you guys drinking? Well, I'm about to drink some super funkadelic from Dionysus Brewery in Bakersfield. So sour, it'll make you squint. You know it. You love it. You want some more of it. We've talked about it before. You know, I'm not a sour connoisseur, but I will have some of that. Not right now. You're going to drink that one, but I have had it and I will have it again. You can have some of this. I do like the, uh, I, I appreciate the, um, appreciate a little bit of that. Here, I saved some for you. No, thanks. That's for you. Just a taste. You brought me Amalgamator. I don't know if I'll drink it, but I do appreciate it. Oh, why? Why don't you drink it? I I, I might. I opened this one for you. (laughs) I I don't know. Why? Okay, I'm trying not to drink too much. I haven't drank that much. I went to Idaho for five days, saw my pops, and didn't drink all that much. Um, Because your dad doesn't drink. It's not that he doesn't drink. We just, he cooked a lot at home. We hung out, and uh, that was about that. So just the opportunity was never there uh, for the most part. You're feeling pretty good? I am feeling good. Good. Thank you. That's good. I feel fantastic. Good. That's good. <laughs> uh, more, more fantastic than last week, for, for sure. There's something about not drinking that I get a little bit cleansed. Um, I think that's universal. <laughs> yeah. That's just for you, though. I'm Everyone not bloating. Else is fine. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a universal thing. Not, not so bloated. <laughs> My body feels better. I'm like, okay, if I could just keep this up. Oh, wait a second. I'm going to podcast. <laughs> I'm going to have some serious difficulties. But it's not like I'm pinning myself down and saying, can't drink. I just don't want to start off. Yeah, you right don't have a bat. problem or anything. Yeah. <laughs> I could stop whenever I want. Listener, thanks for tuning in. This is Bros, Bibles, and Beer. Oh, yeah. We're recording. We are recording. It's a podcast where three friends get together. We have a pint or two, talk about faith and life and uh, culture. Culture. And the things, and uh, you can get at us at the socials at Bros Bibles Beer. Believe it or not, we do respond, and we will read your feedback or your emails or your comments live on uh, each episode. Snide remarks, and we like it because it puts a little wind in our sails when you do that. Um, it's just nice to hear from you. And we have been doing this the um, a little bit of you know we're we're doing this we're doing some podcasting, and so uh, we've been doing the YouTubing. And uh, are we getting feedback? That's a new still muscle subscribership is up forty percent. Wow! I'm not going to say from what number Ooh. to what number, but that's Ooh. a pretty big jump. And uh, but yeah, we appreciate it, and we've been getting some love for um, the social media push that has accompanied Fantastic. it. Fantastic! So, dude, this thing is so powerful. I forgot about the super funkadelic. This is the one with jalapenos in it too. Oh, take a sip of that. I will. It's going to punch you right in the nuts. Okay. I have a, since we're right around Christmas time, as you're sipping that. What do you think? What was the most, (laughs) what was the, oh gosh, that face. That's a (laughs) Christmas treat. I love it. It's so good. I'm just going to smell it. Dude, just drink a little bit of it. You know the, the yeah, come on, do it. No, that's not going to happen. Break your. That's fast. I'm not, bra- I'm not breaking anything. Oh, my eyes are watering a little bit. Yeah, I don't the, want that. The it's, jalapeno. How do you speak? <laughs> the jalapeno is. Comes in there's late. Actual heat, but it's not too much. No. This tropical sour ale burst with juicy apricot up front, then an explosive peppery heat on the back end. We've all been there, boys. Together, it makes for a delicious experience. I'm feeling it in the bag. Oh, yeah, I'll feel that a little bit later. Okay, I have a question for you guys since it's Christmas time. And it's a little playful since you, you know, tasting that and kind of freaking out like a little kid. Did Jesus actually exist? 
Not even close. Was he born on December 25th? What was your favorite toy uh, that you received as a little a good, kid? Dude, that's a good question. Ooh. That's why I asked it, Andy. I like this one. What is the your most favorite toy that you received as a little kid? I'm going to go with what popped in my head first. And it was a life-size G- Barbie. You guys know I was like progressive from the beginning. I was playing with girls' toys before it was cool <laughs> as a boy. I mean, as a penis having individual. We'll we will um we'll be right back. Uh, no, the first thing that came to my head was GI Joe. Back when GI Joe was in its heyday, so eighties, hell yeah, into the early nineties. Cobra. I don't remember what year this was. But it was, it was, I was young, space shuttle. It was like a, a big. Wait, did you just have Tourette's? I remember. Space I'm shuttle. just saying like random words. 85. <laughs> Hang glider. Just, just like. Rectangle. <laughs> this time period. Purple. This time period there was, was a space shuttle. G.I. Joe space shuttle. Oh, and you had that? Yo, it was huge. And it, I know it was expensive. Thank you, mom and dad. I know that was. Um, that was a lot. My brother and I got to do that thing, and it was great. Did you blow it up? Because it was 1986. Oh, God. Seven. Seven. 87. You blew it up. Get your disasters correct. The, no, but I do remember the Challenger explosion. Um, and you probably can't tell, listener, watcher, but I was homeschooled. And uh, <laughs> we were at Very. home where you do school and my mom had it on. I just remember coming in. Look at Jeff's face right now. He's just calm, cool, and collected. It's really bad. Yeah, that's okay. It's not for you. Just like the Challenger disaster. Oh, wait a second. My cheeks are straight. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. why well, is my face moving like this? <laughs> <laughs> Bitter beer face. But I do like, Dude. not that we're going to talk about the chal- Challenger, but... <laughs> My mom was just bawling and I, like that was like literally live on TV and she was bawling and you just walk in and see, you see that because that was the first, the uh, first woman on I Christmas think, morning also, when she gave you uh, the GI uh, Joe space show. Yeah. She we, cried. we rewatched yeah, the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I got you. Boys, I got you this uh, GI Joe space show in honor of. And the also chow- never <laughs> forget. And we were, we're going to watch it. As you open your gift. And here is a the first female G.I. Joe school teacher that you can put into the... Is this, is this okay? This is like it's South Park. Fantastic. 20, 20 yes. years. Oh, my God. 20 years is any, how long before any you... Any favorite toy? Okay, favorite toy. Moving on. I had a favorite Christmas morning, and I think I was six or seven years old, and I woke up. My parents uh, had sent me to stay with some friends for like two days. And in that two days, they had like a full-on cabin slash fort built and installed on the side of our house. And I didn't even know. I had no clue it was That was there. for Christmas? For Christmas. Oh. And like the, yes. big enough that you could go in, like three people could sleep in sleeping bags in this like wood fort thing. It was awesome. Dude, I, I couldn't fit in the G.I. Joe space shuttle. No, you couldn't fit in. That's there. not fair. Yeah. Well, your presence better than mine. Part of you could have fit in there, maybe. We won't talk about which part, right, Jeff? The <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start drinking. <laughs> well, oh, we'll get you there. Yeah. Don't worry. Uh, but that one was awesome, and I remember, like the normal, they they all the setup, and even the the other Christmas Christmas presents that I got were awesome. I had this one that was like these planes that were attached to a wire, and they would like spin around and you would try to catch each other and it was super fun and it was the year i think there was a a santa claus the movie came out do you guys remember this santa claus the movie probably i just the original yeah the original and it had uh part of it was they had these stickers in the movie that said elf made Hmm. anyway it was a great marketing (laughs) genius marketing move because they then sold those stickers in real life and so my parents like got these stickers and like had them put on all the gifts that said, you know, elf made. I'm like, no way, just like the movie. Real elves. Yeah. Nice. So then I opened all my presents and they're like, there's one more. And they walked me outside. I'm like, we're going in the backyard. Oh, I love that. It's Bakersfield. It's like 40 degrees outside right now. It's cold. 
sorry, listeners in the Midwest or whatever. <laughs> it was cold for us. And then I cruise around the corner and my, I remember my six year old brain like broke for a second. I'm like, wait, someone put another structure in our backyard. <laughs> That's How did so I good. Not know about that. It's your new dog house. Yeah. That's so good. <laughs> you live here now, son. Your mom and I live in the big house. You live here in the shack. Now, Jeff, um, your favorite toy. Did they, were paper airplanes invented when you were a kid? What color was the stick and the hoop? Did you, you used to play Chew the Bark? You two are identical twins. How many rocks were you given uh, in for, your brain. for the can that you threw at? Do you guys sleep next to each other and your brains just by osmosis just get it's like the new apple yeah but we have to be now. naked yeah. so hey look for it to really work take the cover off and put the phone sticks to each other you're just throwing alley-oops all day long I know. and all it takes is we just need to dunk it and we're so tall yeah and mostly it's just because you're old oh well my favorite it's not your fault. <laughs> my, my, fa- my favorite toy uh i was the first phone call you know i j- <laughs> Just, just a remark. Just a remark. I like the uh, the parent setup of. Oh wait, there's one more thing. I love. Yeah, I they, love that surprise factor. They Steve Jobs to me. Yeah. What is that back in the corner? Yeah. Oh. I, I, yeah. What'd you get him? Hey, it's like watching, Red Rider BB gun. Right. Watching chips as a kid, the uh, the chief or whatever, when they would have their post, their their little meeting at the end. Every time everyone's walking out, it's like, and hey, one more thing. That's related to nothing, except that you just said those words. One more thing. And then the chief pulls out an iWatch. Oh, wait. <laughs> Apple Watch. All right. Why uh, did you call I, it an I, iWatch? Apple. Stupid. I think back, I, th- I don't know if Idiot. I was about eight years old, but I, we had uh, lived in Nebraska, so we had a basement. And when we were done, my my dad said, uh, there's one more thing. And, and go downstairs. And I went down there, and there was... Shut the lights a, off a four, and locked you in there. <laughs> about a four by eight <laughs> foot piece of plywood and a racetrack where you would you, you had the little lever where yeah. you could accelerate Slot the car, car racers and just flying around dude oh and thank god my dad did put it on a, a wood because the carpet i've been over at a friend's house it's where the carpet would get in there and the car wouldn't go anywhere and you'd have to get it unstuck all the time so that i mean i played that all the were they time. front wheel drive where like the back end it would, would spin, spin out, out. yeah, yeah. It, Love that. And you get just enough speed, sometimes too much, and you just go flying off into no man's land. Dude. But it was fun just having friends over doing that stuff. It that was a blast. I loved getting that. And it lasted lasted a year. And then it was like, okay, I'm done with this. I would play with slot car racers now. Oh yeah. I would do it. I want- there's strategy to it. I mean, we're guys, it's like I want to strategize. How can I get around? Because we had it, it was a two we had a two lane and one lane would go in a different alternate course. Dude, you didn't have the Knight Rider one, did you? I did not. Because that would do the thing. Really? Same sort of. Yeah. It, had it would do the thing, Andy. It would that do, is correct. It would do the thing. Boy, I had another. This is some hot I had two, slot I came car with two talk. questions today. And this has gone so long. This I'm not even going to get That's onto great. the. All I'm right. going to say that. Okay. We'll, we we'll can, edit it yeah, out. Well, yeah. Well, oh, we can do it. It's like no, we're minutes. no, we're not. No, we're not. It would it would take way too long. Um, or we could. Uh, I I have been thinking about something uh, recently and talk with uh, uh, a a common friend of ours and I threw this out to him. Just the thought of um, glorifying God and. Ugh. I know. I'm just kidding. Um, Sounds like Christian. But the I have a a, a couple of you got notes and sh- I, I've got all kinds of notes. Um, but why? They're written. We weren't made perfect. Jesus is was is perfect. And but why did God create us to be flawed? Like why did he? Oh, I'm going to. He had the ability to create anything he wanted, but he made us. Why did God create sin? Flawed. Like why do why not just create this perfection, like Jesus? No, but God. And did. I, this is a jumping off. I realize this yeah. isn't going to go this far. Is good. This is an incredible philosophical can of worms. 
Now, some people might say, hey, we were created perfect until Adam sinned. Yes. Now, does that mean, or Eve, Adam, Eve, let's just lump them all together. Steve. There's a couple interesting things. Um, Adam, so does that mean like Adam and Eve created sin? I mean, or, that's or the fall. by extension, God created them. So God created sin. Is God creating just yep. a, a giant mud pit and then punishing us for coming back dirty? I mean, he, he allows it. But I mean, but is that where we glorify God? So we've been given all of these like family uh, things that get passed down in, you know, in our world, maybe we'd call them soul ties. And it's like this this negative within our family just is in a, a cycle. It's a negative. And, but to like, did God give us and allow this so that we could overcome this? And that's what glorifying God is because God creates humanity for his glory. Okay. Well, if he's creating us for his glory, then how do we glorify him? And I know there's, there's very plain things in the Bible that, you know, I, he, I was healed. I glorify him. I praise him. Um, I have food. I glorify him. Okay. That's in the Bible and those things did happen. But in like right now in our time, how is, how are we glorifying God and why did God create us for his glory and then set up like this challenge for us? It feels like. I don't think he set us up for a challenge. I think that's that's part of the deal that comes with free will. And so God's uh the the importance that God places on free will enables sin and 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 all of these things to to enter into the equation. But the the trade off that's the trade off that he's making is that it's he's he's willing to do that. Unless you're Thomas J Ord and to which point Thomas J. Ord would say, according to the book that I've been reading, I'm reading your book mm-hmm. that you gave me, and and I'm listening to one of his other books. God, he would say, God can't. Yeah, God the can't. Other one? Yeah. yeah. Um, he would say, God can't control us because God is love, and love does not control. And as a result, it it creates the opportunity for humans to go off the rails. And so God is not setting up a situation for us to be sinful other than he's giving us, I mean, sin is in us. He's giving us the opportunity to, right. In, to engage in that. It's up to us. I don't know how much of a difference it makes additionally, but I, I mentioned the word perfection. Like the assumption is we are that everything was perfect before sin, before the fall, which kind of a, Fun dad joke is that's my favorite, my favorite season named after a doctrine that's not actually biblical, the fall. Um, but prefer summer. Perfection is never mentioned. It's good, 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 and and very good. Right. And so it's this idea of like shalom. When things are working well, it doesn't perfect. The idea of like pristine perfection, I think it's slightly different than when things are clicking. You need you kind of need a balance of darkness or strife, a little taste of the negative to be able to really experience when things are really clicking well. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to make a whole thing out of it, but I just maybe I just did because I said it. But there's a be perfect as your father in heaven is perfect, though. But I've, I've when I as I'm saying it, I feel like this is a translation thing. That's probably would get sorted out if someone right. got into the translation. They'd be like, well, what they really mean is like strive towards perfection, knowing that it's, and but ha- even Jesus was like knowing that that was not something to be achieved. And Jesus said, no, no one, Jesus like denied himself being like, no, not even me. Yeah. J- just your father in heaven. And this, this can also get filed in under the, if you subscribe to the mo- multi vocality of the Bible, where is that a podcast? It is. You should subscribe to the mo- multi vocality at uh, multi vocality dot blogspot <laughs> slash substack dot unicorn. Well, in thinking about this, 
topic, um, I came across a uh, a priest, uh, Father Mike, and I think it's Schmitz, but I want to play a little bit. He has this podcast, Ascension, and can't wait to get the Schmitz. Yeah. Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz, and this is Ascension Presents. So years ago, I mean, oh, that it's was this guy. Years ago, like he is a good-looking ago, gentleman. And I uh, was a seminarian, so I had mass up northern Minnesota, and the um, Christmas Eve mass felt like a normal mass, but the homily was awesome. The thing that stuck out to me is I've always remembered that homily, and the old priest, just such a good, good man. He just since passed on. May he rest in peace. Such a holy man. He um, described a Christmas card that he received, and he said there's a Christmas card he got on the front was a fir tree or a Christmas tree uh, that was a little, you know, beautiful, full and whatever, and was bent to the side. And on the front it said, God loves you just the way you are. And he opened it up, and the inside says, he just loves you too much to keep you that way. He just loves, he loves you just the way you are, but he loves you too much to let you stay that way. And I thought that sums up in so many in, in such a like a small moment, in just a one sentence, essentially, um, what we believe about the human person in so many ways. Why? Because we believe that every human being who's ever been created on this planet is made in God's image and likeness. That God made every human being out of the fullness of His grace, the fullness of His love, the fullness out of His fullness of His joy, and every person is made good, intrinsically good. Now, some people will say that, will hear that. His jawline is some intrinsically hear that good. And they, they don't put the comma there. They put a period there. And what they mean and what they do with that, what they'll do with that is, well, God made you perfect. God made you just the way you are. That however you're made, whatever you experience, however you're built, that God wants you exactly that way. And that can lead to devastating consequences. In fact, just the way you are. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah. Boop, boop. So, oh. Another Billy Joel callback. I've seen this guy. I didn't know his name, but I've when I peruse the top religion and spirituality charts. Don't go changing. Man, his beautiful face, like the policy on celibacy for Catholic priests. It's like when I see his face, it's like it's Dairy a, Girls. It's a shame. Watch that. Watch that series, <laughs> Dairy, Dairy Girls. girls really? <laughs> the good-looking priest comes out, and they're like. Oh, I guess seen Father John. God, he's so sexy. <laughs> when I saw this guy, I'm like, come on. Dude, he was, he's like chiseled out of stone. and But nope, nobody can touch him. <laughs> I'm going to convince him. <laughs> so I have another piece of this because he gives an example okay. of a, a friend. Well, should Whoa, we? Oh, a goat? What's up? Let's respond to this. I was hoping, but you guys went off in Joker land. The, um, th- there is something about, there's a lot of movement towards like acceptance at all costs for good reason. There's been growing up, especially with, you know, some of the, like right now, everything is good all the time, no matter what to, you know, to varying degrees of fruit. Not all of it is good. But it's a reaction to some of the judge, like previous judgmentalism of, you know, people of faith and or whoever and learning to accept people as they are. So there's there's good reasons to do a version of like, you're fine where you're at, like you're acceptable, you're, you're already loved. And that's true. But there's also, if if you just accept that and you stay in it, like, I don't need to change. There's, there's nothing I need to change about myself. I think that's what he's pushing back against. And I, I I think that's good. There's a healthy version. There's a healthy version and maybe a time for don't change a thing. You need to just rest and learn to accept yourself the way you are. Um, There's a time for that, I think. But I don't know about staying. I think you always want to be looking like, okay, I have healed from whatever trauma based on, on, you know, in this fictitious, fictitious example. And now it's time to, be, okay, what's next? What's next for me? I don't think that's, this is very controversial. And I realize that's a controversial statement. <laughs> it could I, be. I just don't think it is like, yeah, God loves you where you are. I, I feel like I heard this 20 years ago. God loves you where you are. Um, he loves you enough just to, to not let you stay there. Right. But the, your mileage will vary. So there's a version of it where, yeah, we want everyone to feel welcome coming to our church. Your cliche should vary. But 
but if you, uh, you know, if you keep doing the thing that we, that I view as sin, you know, you can come in here, but you can't actually be involved. And so there, it, there is a gross version of it where it, it can be, it, 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 there is a gross version of it. So, well, the underlying, but mess- I agree with you ultimately, the underlying message is that, uh, we haven't achieved perfection, right? Like not, not, and not going to, we're not going to it, but it doesn't, I don't even think that's the point, but it doesn't mean that it's not something that we're, we're not strive. It doesn't mean we don't strive towards being better and getting better. It's like God is basically saying, Hey, there's still, there's still room for improvement. Sanctification is the word that Jeff was just thinking of. No, it's a fancy word. To skanktification. Skanktification. No, I, was, I was thinking we're not striving for perfection. We're striving for glorifying God. And I guess that is the bigger question. Like, how do we glorify God where there's transformation in our lives? Because glorifying God, eating, it's like, wasn't very difficult today. It's the challenges that we have. Wait, what? Glorifying God eating? No, no. Where someone says, oh, we're, I'm just, I glorify God, praise God that we have food today. Oh, like a little grace? That's thanking God, though. It's, is that glorifying God? It actually says glorifying and praising God in, in Luke. By eating? Yes. Oh. And like giving thanks before you eat kind of a thing? All the above. And, which actually, uh-huh. I... I like that better than fat people. Listen up. <laughs> the glory is with you. Anyway, I want to play. You guys, you got metabolism privilege, by the way, write down skanktified as a <laughs> potential podcast title. <laughs> Skanktification <laughs> a new, was the word. It's probably not even a new vocabulary word. All right, here we go. Here's his uh, example of a buddy he has. Eating feels like low hanging fruit in terms of glorifying God. But what Ooh, is, you, is there fr- certain I like things? fruit. Am I allowed to eat what of eating anything though? Can I eat anything? Like we choose things like we should. Um, we're divided, right? We're divided from God, which leads to death. We're divided from each other. We sometimes can't get along. We're even divided in ourselves. And one of those ways we're divided in ourselves is we as we have this thing, a fancy term called concupiscence. Concupiscence, though, it means that. I'm attracted to evil, right? So there are some things in my life that I'm, attra- I'm drawn to. Either I'm attracted to the, the wrong thing. Uh, go back. Curcumin? Curcumin. It's our sin. Excuse me. It's our sin nature. I mean, it's our flesh that, and he calls it concupiscence. Uh, I'll, I can, I have the court reporter read this that. This thing, a fancy term called concupiscence. Concupiscence, though, it means that I'm attracted to evil, right? So there are some things in my life that I'm, att- I'm drawn to. Either I'm attracted to the, the wrong thing or I'm attracted to use the right thing in the wrong way. And this is all of us, like every single one of us. And it doesn't like start when you um, become 15 or when you're 21 or when you're 45. We're born with it. In fact, if you want to say, here's the term, the term that people use and abuse so often, we're born this way. Now, sometimes people will say, as an excuse to justify their behavior, they'll say something like, I was born this way. So I have this friend, his, uh, uh, my best friend, his name's Nick. Nick will say about this uh, born this way kind of idea. He says, yeah, I mean, ever since I was a kid, as long back as I, far back as I can remember, he says, I've always been the cockiest person I know. I've always been the most arrogant person I know. Um, I am just the like, kind of most like arrogant. Along comes Jesus and he says <laughs> that you need to be gentle and humble of heart, meek and humble of heart. And he's like, well, Jesus, I was born this way. This is how I am. You're telling me to not be the way I am? You created me perfect. There's nothing I need to repent of. The very fact that I was made this way or the fact that I was, um, I experienced this inclination must mean that God wants me to act on that. That's the, that's the natural progression. That's, that's childish. What is? That kind of reaction. I think that's a childish reaction. I mean, just follow, like, let's, let's go, let's pick the extreme. I just, I wanted to, I wanted to kill those babies. Like, that's just, it was the inclination that I had. I guess I was just built that way. Well, have you met those babies? They had, they might've had it coming. They, those babies. I mean, so it, it is like a childish emotion, emotional response to say that. Someone should be a little more like introspective to, to recognize not everything that you desire or not every inclination that you have is good for you. Right. We can true, so 
what I hear him say is like, well, I just felt that. So what's wrong with that? Well, right. when looking out into like a, a community, a group of friends or whatever it might be, we would say, oh, they're like this and they're like that and they're like that. Like, and it's might not be a positive thing. They might be actually using, you know, how they, the gift they've been given or just the way they're bent that like to use the Christmas tree. That's, you know, it's, it's bent on the Christmas card and uh, it's like, oh, you're perfect. But, you know, I love you too much to leave you like that. And I'm going to keep working on you. But I think my <clears throat> my supposition would be that we have these things we're born with and we glorify God and transform ourselves through those few things that we just keep getting drawn back into, uh, into like evil. It's like, just keep going in this direction. We glorify God by getting drawn into the evil by getting pull, by pulling away like if we have if we're at a crossroads it's like turn left and i keep embracing my arrogance and my pride and my lust and my greed or take a right in that order and take a right and go towards jesus and and yeah. and that and if you're going in that direction you uh, it's i would say that you are that is when you are truly glorifying god when yeah. you've gone against the things that are pulling you towards evil yeah as opposed to oh i i glorify god thank you for this food i praise you it's like that's that seems very simplistic compared to the things that s- seem to come after all of us uh, yeah. Like in Corinthians, it's like everybody is going to have trials and nobody will be without trials, but it's, there's very specific things that come after each individual We're unique, but there's still, um, yeah, the challenges. So I don't think it's the simple things that transform us. I think it's the, yeah, these, the big things. So, which leads me to like, what is the one thing that you guys what's your worst sin keep getting drawn by and you're like ah i don't want to be that way but i just i give myself over to to that you really did ask what our biggest sin was i did <laughs> what are we doing this podcast I, for i struck my wife last night <laughs> Wait, you're saying that jokingly? Do you trying to like glaze this, glaze over that? Accidentally, <laughs> it, I I don't think mistakes are sin. sin. I know <laughs> Jesus made mistakes. He I didn't sin. I'm okay with that. Yeah, it ended what was well, going to be a it was going to be a fun night, and I accidentally uh, struck her, fun. and <laughs> that was time for time for bed, and. <laughs> We're just going to let the theater of the mind take over for people. Hopefully at this point, Lisa's smiling about that and, you know, wow, we'll, really we'll make happened. up for it. Maybe after this podcast. It was an I didn't see you coming situation. Therefore, yes, it was not. There was no anger involved. Therefore, no one came. <laughs> uh, uh, you guys. Hey, Colossians 3.17 says... To put the Bible in bros, Bibles, and beer. That's good. You're welcome. You got excited. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So what does it mean to do all in the name of um, in the name of Jesus? It's like there's a version of it Christianese wise that's like needs to wear it on its sleeve and like make sure everyone knows that you're the you're the Bible guy or you're the Christian guy. Like, Oh, just like, thank, thank God for, you know, every situation is like, oh, God, God bless. Thank God in a way that's like, yeah, is that, is that real? Or is, and maybe that's a version of doing all in the name of Jesus as you vocalize it. But maybe it's just like, ultimately it's being a good human. Like is every action you're doing bearing good fruit or leading towards good fruit. And that could be, eating actual fruit or, you know, having a, sharing a meal with people, good conversations, building each other up. It could be this podcast. I argue it's this podcast in its best form. Like even though there's 
for some people, the mileage will vary on the on some of the crassness, but ultimately it's designed to build up, not tear down. And uh, I think you can get a little legalistic with it in a way that's gross, where it's like, are is this actually glorifying to God? And then you can beat yourself up over it because, oh my God, am, am, am I? What does that even mean? Did I pump this gas to the glory of God today? <laughs> oh, you, pump, you did, I actually. may or may not have pumped it. To his glory. You know, we get to the end of the year and we always think back, like, what was the greatest uh, <laughs> moment of your year? Whether, whether it was with your wife, relationships, friendships, work. And I guess if I were to ask a question to everyone, you guys or people that would listen, is as you look back throughout the past year, where have you truly glorified God in your life? Oh, Dude, I would... Wow. In a and I don't yeah. mean to find twenty things. I like. I'll like, put it this way: if if where are you fighting the good fight? I'll be lucky if, if I can I, find one thing. If I were, if I if if I prayed every single morning, let's just imagine I did that. Um, it would look something like this: um, God, help point me in the right direction, Mike. That, because you know you're not going in the right direction? No. Just just throughout the day. I don't know what the day will hold. I'm going to encounter all kinds of stuff. So God just like, help point me in the right direction. That's actually really, I, I don't say act, that sounds condescending. That is a really interesting orientation to start the day because the definition of sin is just missing the mark. And maybe you miss the mark a little bit. Maybe you miss it a lot. but the idea of you're trying to hit the mark aim me true this day god like that what a great tone setter that could be but it's even less well and the way i think about it, like in the right direction like north there's multiple versions of north right it's not just mm, there's a pinpoint and if you just miss that pinpoint you've blown it it's right am i just Any, am yes. i oriented in the right direction point me in the right direction at least at the very least whatever i encounter today oregon maine just not Maine. Going north. Just not Maine. Whatever Maybe it the is, Dakotas. Lord. Yeah. Potentially. God, oh. God hates Maine. They all sound <laughs> terrible. But yeah, that's, that's again, if I, if I were to do that, that, that would be the prayer that I would pray. That's closest to, um, I think, the way that I engage God and ask for him for guidance and the way that I, I think I try at least in, try to live my life. Is I try to live my life in a way that I feel like God and my I, I feel like I'm trying to orient my life in the direction that you'd want me to be going to. It doesn't mean that like there's not detours and mistakes and things like that, but at the end of the day, am I figuring a way to the towards the direction that you want me to go? Okay. So to come back to the question. Um, you. I asked the question, and I then you said, if, this, is what I would, "This is what I would do." Yeah. I said, "When you look back at this, this is where year, you say." Well, I answered yes. your first question. I answered your first question. Then you added another question. At, if you look back at this past year, where have you truly transformed and glorified God? If that's possible for you to extract that from your brain right now. Oh, when I planted the seed in a coworker's mind that God isn't in control, actually. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> not, that's not the most. Most is always hard for me. I can't, like, I don't know if I can rank Yeah, them. but if you but forget that's something if that you stands forget out, the like most, highlights, I could do highlights. Like, literally, like going back to, like, literally, like, I just doubled up in the likes. All right. Keep doing speech. It. Uh, Thomas Ord, you mentioned him. He yeah. gets so much feedback from people that are just like ready to give up on any sort of life of faith because of like the terrible things that have happened to them. And they've been told like, it's part of God's plan. It's good. It's part of God's plan. And then they hear somebody like Thomas Ord talking about like, God is, God is working for your good. However, God's nature is, is self-limiting by the definition of agape love. Yeah. And it's just like, it doesn't make the wounds go away, but it just, Man, so so sharing that information, it, depending on the person, what they need to hear and where they're at, it could be life-changing. Like, oh my gosh, I can, I don't have to throw baby Jesus out with the doubt b- bathwater because there, yeah. there might be a different way to come at this, this problem. 
you're speaking to him planting a seed in the yeah, coworker. Yeah, yeah. I, just, I tell, tell him like no, God's there's, own, Yeah, there's, I, right. There's another way. That's not. I mean, that, I don't think that's the highlight. It's just something that popped in my head. I was, was just yes, Andy. I know. I know, you. I know. Okay, but the I'm my like belief. Jeff. My belief is that it popped in your head because it actually could have some serious impact. If you don't say that, yeah, maybe you have regret, and you're like wasn't glorifying God there. I have regret and I wish I had done that, but you did do it. And you have no idea what will happen with that seed that you planted. Uh, it could change his life and be exponential. So it could, it totally could be. It could. I'm, I'm like hesitating on the, like, is there only, is it binary? Is there only glorifying God or not? Well, we're all intrinsically good. Like, and we're, but we fight, are we? You know, yes. Or are we intrinsically bad? No, we're intrinsically good. I don't like that binary. I think <laughs> we have the ability for both. And, but the, the idea of total depravity, the T in Calvin. tulip, um, I, I just don't think that makes sense. If you look at the grand scheme of the arc of justice throughout history, in spite of all the hiccups that we've had in the last 20 years or so, or pick your time frame. Overall, there is this progression towards more justice for more people, more equality for more people. Plenty of work to be done still, but I think that fights against the idea of, of total depravity. I think we, we sh- certainly have the ability to be totally depraved um, for sure, but we also have the ability for good. So I, I think the, the bi- any binary in this conversation is going to be too simplistic, although yeah. it sells books. It does sell books. It do. And if it sells this podcast better, maybe we can, we'll be the total depravity podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's we've given ourselves over to the devil. You guys want more Bible? Yes. We're putting more Bible in this one episode right at the buzzer of the year than we have in the last like three years of this podcast. Um, but it's related. You mentioned as a touch your leg, be perfect as your father in heaven is perfect. I just think that the listener might be asking, how is, how is the father in heaven perfect? And let's find out with a little bit of context. How do he be? I don't know, Zach. Why don't you tell us? This is Matthew something or other verse 43. <laughs> you have heard that it was said it's in the midst of, um, uh, coming after the Beatitudes, Sermon on the Mount. Uh, you've heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. By the way, I don't think you can find a spot in the Old Testament that says, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. And I, I was list- actually fairly recently listening to something where they're like, it's possible he's using hyper- he's being sarcastic or using hyperbole to make a point. Because... There's a quote there, like I'm pointing back to the Old Testament. You have heard it said, but where's there's our, no. Where's our hermeneutic board? Hermeneutics. Hermeneutic. Love your neighbor, hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For He makes His sun rise on the evil and the good, sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. By the way, in the Old Testament, there's talk of like. You get the rain. God sends the rain when you do the good thing. Uh, But for if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Dirty, dirty Gentiles. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly father is perfect. And how is the heavenly father perfect in this scenario? It's how he just he's doling out goodness, no matter the situation, to everybody, like loving the people that don't love him and whatnot. So, and I think that falls in line to how do we glorify God? Like, what does it mean to glorify God? You can get lost in the weeds of like, oh, I didn't do the exact Christian thing, or the, I did this thing, but I didn't make sure they knew I was doing it for Jesus. Like, that's literally something I've struggled with growing up. And I, I know a lot of Christians do too. It's like, you need to make sure they know it's happening because of Jesus. Um, 
Or is it just like, let your fruit do the talking, which is a weird visual. Dude, they will know we are Christians by our t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Love, L-O-V-E. Listener, if you're not on YouTube, Zach just- You should be. Zach's wearing a shirt that says love and he just- It's my PlayStation shirt. Looks like PlayStation yeah, symbols. He just thrusted it at the camera. I have really good posture so everyone can see my shirt unwrinkled. All right. Does that help at all? Help who? I don't know. I mean, I think about the person who's an asshole and you, to glorify God, will be kind to them. Or the person who hates you, you'll be kind to them. Or the person who's uneducated, you'll, you'll be patient and walk through something with them uh, as opposed to, you know, turning away or saying something nasty or just saying, I don't have the time. I mean, that's glorifying God. And we can, we know, we know people who do this. And <clears throat> that is, I think that's a, an exact example of, of how <clears throat> we show our Christianity in the world and our just following Christ and, and demonstrating. And we don't say, Hey, look over here. I'm, I'm helping them because I'm Christian. You're just doing it. And you're, you're just waiting. You're present. Like the moment, that, like Andy saying, planting that seed to a coworker, like, you know, have you ever thought of this or whatever that conversation was. And that, that is, that can be life altering. And it also impacts those around you. It just makes the world better. Be like Jesus in that way. It's a wild way to think of perfection. I think most of us think of perfection as being, oh, you're just, you're not thinking any bad thoughts. There's like zero lust. You're not thinking anything angry. You're not impatient. You're doing all of the right things all the time. And this is a more big picture. Like, yeah, there's going to be variance. You're not always going to miss it. You're not, you're not always going to hit that, that target, but here, God is perfect in this way. Go and do likewise. It's just more of a general template to shoot for that I, I think is helpful. Well, it's helpful for me in my experience. And that is my experience because I said it. Remember that time where you were parking in the uh, air quotes wrong spot at school pickup and that dude came up next to you and oh my God. How'd, how'd you roll down your window? And he's like, dude, what the, or why are you parked yeah. right here? And you just... And you just responded to him, sorry, I'll do better next time. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did. Very briefly, the, yes, it was school pickup line. And I was, was that passive of, aggressive or were you just being straightforward with him? It was just what came out of my mouth. That was instinct because I was afraid. I'm like, this guy's ready to fight. Mm, I was oh. blocking traffic. I was not technically in the wrong based on the rules of the road in that particular school zone. But it was holding up traffic a bit and a gentleman got out of his car and walked up to me and I'm like, what is happening? My brother-in-law later is like, are you okay? I was ready to like come to your defense because apparently this guy is likes to fight guy. But yes, he he did. He confronted me and all I could say is like, I'll do better next time. And I, it just, it short circuited him. It did. And I feel like that was you not returning darkness with darkness. Yeah, there's probably a different side of me at a different time in life, or I'll boast a little bit. I'm a peacemaker on the Enneagram, and I th I think a different personality he walked up to, there would have been sure. YouTube videos dedicated to that viral <laughs> moment of parents <laughs> fighting in the parking lot. <laughs> but yeah, go ahead. Keep talking about me. Go ahead, Andy. Did you do better? I don't know. <laughs> Inside, I was like, fuck that guy. <laughs> So I ruined it all. That's, I ruined all the glory. Yeah. All the glory got negated. <clears throat> Andy, er, much earlier, you said something to the effect of how, well, this topic is, it's not very controversial. Oh, the God, or God, the example God loves you where you are and he doesn't want to leave you there. Okay. That was the yeah, piece. Yes, that is. But the idea of glorifying God through transformation and constantly fighting back and going in God's direction, fighting back the crap that you were born with, the crap that gets passed on to you from your family, like fighting that back is the crux of, I think, transformation and glorifying God. Yeah. And I don't, I think there is, 
I mean, I, I just think of coming home from my my dad's up in Idaho. It was a long drive. I started to get tired and then sitting there clicking on my phone and looking at stuff. I'm getting anxious. And I started thinking about like... While you were driving. Uh, yeah. I feel, you know, I, I feel like I'm just going to start clicking on things that I maybe I shouldn't. And I don't want to be and alone I'm like, with my thoughts. what the hell? Like, why is this even entering my brain right now? And I literally kind of shook it off and yelled. And then I, the next thing I know, I'm listening to chapters one through 16 of Romans for the next whatever it was. And it changed the trajectory. Not not saying that Romans yeah. will change the world, but it's like there's a it's constant uh, things coming after you. But there, Jeff, what? We, Sorry, we haven't. We've talked about this. We you haven't gotten permission from us to start reading Romans. <laughs> That's right. There's a hey, oh, you need a sign. Yeah, I just want to say. Glorify God. Tell Do it. Go, Lisa, glorify, glorify. Lisa, hit Zach. Glorif- glorify hit the Lord. Zach when you see him. Oh, after right. last night, she'll be like, definitely. I will I will punch him. <laughs> Give him the old kick Fair in the game. nuts. Jeez. <laughs> uh, oh, my gosh. Thanks for the encouragement. You're welcome. So much glorifying. Where were we? Was that my fault? Did we get off track? No. No. Yeah, we did. But you but you were in the drive and you felt you felt your your brain pulling you into uh the path that you that of darkness. Like absolutely. And and that in there lies the crossroads of the devil is sitting there, your that darkness of like go in this direction. Just, you know, whatever. And then there's yeah, you're kind of trying to justify but the longer you sit on those thoughts, whether it's the guy saying something to Zach, if Zach doesn't say anything, and then he's like thinking like, I'm going to, you know, but he has something that just seems natural and neutralizing it or whatever it might be. But there's a constant fight. I think it's, it, it may feel like it's a cop out to say this, but like people are complicated and the world is complicated. And so when we try to to overly overly simplify these things of like you're basically basically good or you're basically bad and you basically have to just do this thing like it's there's it's a lot more to it than that and and the chaos and uncertainty of the of the way that we engage with life every single day we don't we don't know what's happening tomorrow they have ramifications the decisions that we make good and bad they do and 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 stuff changes and the same thing could happen to us five times in a row and we would react differently every single time. And so all of these, all of these variable variables, like I I guess I just, I mentioned this to to just say anytime someone, whether (laughs) within this podcast or not, tries to boil it down to a very simple formula. Oh, just do this. Oh, people are just like that. Like give yourself a break, give others a break. It's it is more complicated than that, and way more lives in the gray than than we think it does. Yeah, stop and stop giving money and attention to people that do. I mean, all all of everything is all of news is dedicated to like in versus out. The biggest ministries are often in versus out, and yeah. like you're fighting a culture war. And if you're fighting a culture war, there. In any war, there are good people and bad people, and you can't afford to make a mistake. And so it becomes this super dichotomic. We'll go with it. Yeah, we'll We'll allow it. it. Uh, It's it becomes a super polarized thing where, which is probably redundant, super and polarized. It's just polarized, and but that's how ministries grow. That's how politics, culture war fighters grow. It. But it's not ultimately it's not good if you live in that because the other person is way more complicated. The Israel Palestine, like yes, there there is evil happening, and there was evil that happened. Um, terrorist attacks, like that, there is that kind of evil, that kind of black and white. But in the mix, in the midst of trying to heal those t- types of things or look for solutions. That's where all the gray is, and there, there's so much more complexity. Or the person that 
flips you off on the freeway or the person who responds poorly to you in in the restaurant or whatever like those those things that we encounter all the time the coworker that you get in a fight with and those are the those are the places where you make that's how you push the ball forward in life for the entire world is like those little moments Dude, where you change trajectories i still keep thinking of i think about this phrase all the time that like um i'm going to i'm going to butcher it a little bit but it's like something to the effect of be kind for everyone is fighting a battle. Like that's the, the gist of it. And, and I think in my mind, that is an opportunity to, to bring glory to God, which is how are you, how are you going to demonstrate God's love through your reactions to, to the person who's probably reacting poorly to you. And that's the hardest part. Like that's the hardest one. Yep. And it, it takes a little bit of put yourself in their shoes, even if you're imagining it. Yeah. Like this dude getting out of his car, wanting to pick a fight. Like it's not about this moment. It's not about what I did or where I was parked. There's like so many things leading up in that guy's life to, to go into that situation. And I I have in my worst moments where, where I'm like, usually it's internalized. I'm not yelling at people or picking fights outside of myself, but inside my head, I think all kinds of like crazy, terrible thoughts about people. You're the, you, George Costanza in your mind. <laughs> well, the jerk store called and they ran out of you. But pretty much. Um, and usually that's like, okay, what is, wow. I'm, I'm like flying off the handle in, internally in a way I normally don't. Yeah. And there's usually, Reasons if I think about it for a minute, oh, it's because of this thing going on in my life. I have this amount of stress because of this other thing. You're distracted. Distracted. From being present. Yeah. And it's taking away my ability to have bandwidth for humaning properly. And and so I think uh you, go ahead. Go ahead. You could be distracted. I think sometimes for me it is, well, uh, do I believe some of what's being said right now to me? Like, do I believe I deserve some of that? And I'm mad about that. Oh, you know, like, Oh, is that your second guessing? Yeah, or, well, or you're kind of like reset. If I'm, like I'll, I'll put it this way. If someone, if someone responds crazy to me, like in some, in some sort of situation like that, if my response is, Hey, are you okay? Changes everything. It it immediately goes, well, I know I know who I am. I know that whatever this person is saying to me or about me is inaccurate. And so I can look at them and go, are you okay? Versus I get mad because deep down I'm like, well, A, like what they say matters to me. But B, like somehow maybe they've hit a chink in the armor and 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 I agree with some of that. And I'm mad about that. And that's why it hurts. And that's why it hurts. Yeah. And so there's there's a piece of that. I think Jeff may be coming back to like the the beginning of what you were starting to plant there is like who is who is it that God has made you to be? And so and how do you know who that how do you know that? How do you how is that revealed to you through your life of who God has made you to be and who he's continuing to make you to be? That's the I I loved you where you're at. And so much so that I'm, I'm loving you through to be becoming more than just that. Certainly. And there's challenges that we're given that we've been born into that transformation that we actually have to take action and yeah. be present. And it sucks. I hate that. That's the way that it works. That sucks. That's how you get better is through shitty stuff. It just, it just is like, I don't know why that's the matrix thing, right? Like where they correct, they talk about like, Hey, we built a perfect matrix and humanity just like folded on itself. It couldn't handle it. It was just like all messed up. So we had to, we had to like introduce all this messed up stuff so that it had something to struggle against. Yeah. Which is wanting wanting to be the center of attention, which is, and stepping back from that being humble, like the friend who's like arrogant wants to be like, Hey, yes, you know, I'm the champion of the world as opposed to like, I'm going to, sit back and just let others have like, I, I think I saw it was uh, 
uh, Locke, the quarterback for the Seattle Seahawks, had an incredible Drew had an incredible game, and then just what just naming players on his team and defense, offense, and emotional as well. But there was humbleness in that. I'm like, I want to root for that guy, but why do I want to root for that guy? I think there's something. Because he doesn't have it all. He's, he's on your he's, fantasy team. He's the underdog. <laughs> he's, a, he's the underdog. He's new. Backup quarterback right. that came into the league. Everyone thought he was going to be the next big thing, and he wasn't. He flamed out. But he could take that moment and and, and take it for himself, and he didn't. I mean, there, there yeah. are plenty of people that have. So that there's a huge... It's a subtle difference, but it's being present and your words matter. Well, I think there's there's a way for us to interpret the hard stuff that we go through through life, right? Which is like God is punishing me or God has forsaken me or God forgot about me. But the other version is that like in spite of this uh asking God, can can you help me can you help me get better through this cuz it's not going to be the last time that I encounter something like this. So the next time I encounter it like I've I've like guide me I've, through the day. Your I've got to be. I've got to be able to weather the next storm that looks like this. I can't go through life just getting tossed around all the time. So God, like, grow me, change me, help, help me be better than I was the, the first time I went through this stuff. And we don't want to white knuckle it. So that's why we do. We don't want to just keep grinding. There's some moment where we just say, I can't do this. And God doesn't want that for us, right? Like. That doesn't pass the sniff test. Why would God, why would a good God want us to like have a groundhog day of reliving <laughs> the same sets of mistakes all the time, right? But he'll allow it. Yeah, which is why I think there's a good argument for um he doesn't want it, but he'll allow it. Exactly. Um so the word we we probably have to land the plane. Uh the sanctification Skanktification Skanktified. is how <laughs> To be skanktified is to be set apart for special use or purpose. That is to make holy or sacred. Uh, therefore, sanctification refers to the state or process of being set apart. And I think there's... I feel like this is like a late 90s Christian no. ska thing. Sorry, I, I literally thought you were reading like a Webster's dictionary skanktification Skank, I'm like wait a second that's oh, in the okay, urban dictionary skank, okay. don't look that up yeah <laughs> uh no but there is you say 90s but there is like a view of sanctification is like oh as a christian you need to be sanctified you need to be set apart and so there's this, this idea of like being perfect or yeah eventually i'm going to get there and i think the bad news and the good news are the same you're never going to get there like it's a process. It's a process, and it's a never-ending process. Never-ending process. You've just proven my point. <laughs> yeah, we do spoon naked. <laughs> Can't wait for Mammoth. But I do. <laughs> I will be in the side bed. <laughs> I, I want to say, though, similar to our cheesy Rick slash rich roll references of the guy that has the perfect vegan body. It's like your sanctified ness is going to look different than any other person's and that's okay. So there's a version of, there's no version of like, Oh, as a man, you will be sanctified and we will end up with the perfect masculine man. And as a woman, you're going to be the perfect feminine specimen of a woman once you're fully sanctified. And it's where are you at in the process? Where are you at in the process? Everyone's sanctification template, if I may, looks different. And so their sanctification process is different. So your mileage will vary and that's okay. Dude, drink whenever time you say, whenever time you say. <laughs> oh my gosh. Whenever time you say. Whenever Cheers. time you say, your mileage may vary. Jeff. Oh, is that my, is that my uh, that's thing? A third time. Okay. Yeah. Third time. It's okay. Trying. We all have our things. That's yours. Well, in the process of eliminating that, my mileage will vary. Maybe. Do we have landing gear coming down, or yeah, do we? Okay. I just grace upon grace for each individual person. Like, there's so much guilt and shame wrapped up in like, oh, I'm not, I'm not sanctified in the way I thought I should be. Like, 
that's an actual thing for a lot of Christians. Oh man, just zoom that. Life out. is way more complicated. Just than zoom that. that out for your whole life. By the way, yeah, we are naturally as humans like comparative creatures, and that's okay. Like I, it doesn't always help me, but sometimes it helps me a little bit when I hear someone like John Mayer criticize himself for like, oh, I wish I could have been better. Like I just not. It's not quite where I'd want it to be like unsatisfied. I'm going, okay. That's when I murder him in my mind. Yeah. I'm just like, okay, if this guy is struggling, then maybe I can be his version of guitar playing sanctification is a very different road to sanctification than mine. And I just have to get used to that. I'll allow it. (laughs) That's a good question. Jeff, I appreciate you bringing this up. This was good. You, you, uh, you brought some thought provoking conversation. Um, fueling. Yeah, I enjoyed it. What's the name of the gentleman, the priest with the incredible jaw that cuts light so well? Father Michael Bobichael. I believe it's it's <laughs> Mike Schmitz. Father Mike Schmitz. But I'd have to. It's Ascension Presents. That's the the YouTube. Channel. Is it weird that they call them Father when they're actually not a father and never will be? Is that part weird? Having grown up in the well, Catholic Church, I never really thought about it. I'm just telling you, like, thinking about it. You got kids. Those are some good stoner thoughts. <laughs> Tonight, I'm going to be contemplating <laughs> that. <laughs> Wait a second, you can't have kids. Yeah, and why don't they call the? Why do they call? Them, why is it just father and sister? There's no mothers. Ooh, think about that. Mother one. Teresa. Well, she's because the one. there's only one, no. It's Mother Mary. Mother. Kind of a big deal in yes. the Catholic Church. Yes. That is the biggest other deal than in the Mother Catholic Church. Ter- other than Mother Teresa, which he just sorry <laughs> destroyed your thesis. Yep. Probably the most famous asexual in the history of mankind. And we'll talk about that next week. Oh. No, <laughs> All right. A quick what are we consuming? Because right, Andy's quick. gonna go sing songs. Oh, I don't want to do it. Really? Christmas caroling. I know. We're on the edge of it. Our fa- our family joins our neighborhood. We do Christmas caroling in our neighborhood, but usually the way that it works out, it's kind of weird because everyone's caroling. There's no one <laughs> at the houses that we go to. Oh, gosh. So it gets weird. Yay. I brought my guitar last time. That was fun. Um, okay. I'll go over it very quick. I've been reading the book that you gave me. Thank you. Um, it's Omnipotent. The Death, Death of, of Omnipotence and the Birth of Omnipotence by... Um, Thomas J. Ord, and at the same time, I'm also listening to on audiobook um, God Can't, which sounds like it's just slightly a slightly different fa- flavor of the book that you gave me. But yeah. both, but both are good, both are life giving, and uh, don't be jealous, guys. Take take oh, I a moment. That was the, I thought that was the name of no, the book. Don't be jealous, both of you. But yeah. I, I had dinner. <gasps> On Monday with Art Greco. Fuck you. (laughs) The gate will probably get that. I knew there was something. Uh, He he accidentally texted the group chat of like, yeah, Ah, see you on Monday. Monday. (laughs) Zach's only saying that because he's like, you didn't do that download when we were sharing our spooning last night. (laughs) I thought we shared everything. That was behind a firewall. Yeah, you have to get the paywall to get that. If you want to sign up for our Patreon, it's uh, you can find out the more. No, I had a, I had, I had a little dinner with Art Greco, which was delightful. Love you, Art Greco. I don't know why I keep saying your first and last name. You kind of have to though. Art is great. <gasps> Art Greco driving the kid Even to school better. today saw a truck. It was a it was a truck that had like Italian foods and sauces and it said Greco and Sons. And Lila, my daughter, looked at it. She's like, hey, wait, isn't that your friend's name? And I was like, oh, yeah. And she goes, does he have sons? And I went, he does. does. He has sons. So there you go. Thank you, guys. Those are the things. What are you guys consuming? Uh, I've been listening to a a brand new book, Hot Off the Presses, in the vein of the conversation last podcast giving you the Pete Enns book, Jeff, of dipping your toe into scholarship. Similar thing. This is called The A to Z of the New Testament by James F. McGrath. And he's a Bible scholar. And it, and the subtitle is Things Experts Know That Everyone Else Should Too. And so it's another great uh, 
great dip your toe into Bible scholarship if you're interested in that. Because, you know. What's one thing that's stuck out to you so far? Well, I've I've just started it. Um, well, I'm like three chapters in, and now you say that, and now I can't think of anything. But he'll he'll just take he'll take concepts and stories that most even casual Christians are aware of, and he'll be like, "Let's take a look under the covers and see what else is going on than just your regular English translation is allowing you to to think." So. It, yeah. it kind of exposes that stuff. So I'm sorry, I can't think of a specific example, but that's that's what it's going for. And it is good. Well, you have failed this segment of- I did. Because <laughs> it's a test and that's how this works. Yeah. And the good news is, you know, Jesus, Paul, some of the New Testament writers, they would have failed seminary too, <laughs> based on the way they quoted Old Testament scripture. And that's a little, <laughs> uh, that's a little tease into something that the book unpacks. Nice. And it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not, it's, it's uplifting and building. This isn't a like, Oh, he's coming. He's trying to destroy Christianity. You heard it here, folks. Misquote the Bible. (laughs) Jesus said so. (laughs) Yes. Well, you heard, I listened to Romans. I went to my dad's and I was there for five days. And, uh, so I didn't consume much except hanging out with him and consuming conversation and, so that was that was good. It's good for good for him, good for me, for our hearts and souls, just to dad and son get together and and just spend time together. And I I don't see him that often. Um, driving back, listening to Romans, um, but I started listening to this "O Holy Night" by a gentleman um, that I'm like I can't get away from this, and I just keep listening. David Phelps, do you know? Is Was it, he on American Idol? Can I play this? Yeah, you can do it. Unless he doesn't share it with YouTube. All right, we get it. Yeah. See? He's still going. This is a way to get around the algorithm, by the way. This is how we play music. So, so somebody that's told, real. So somebody told me that he is the top tenor in the world, or one of the top tenors in the world. And when it gets to the crescendo of like fall on your knees and the and you don't mean like, like he's sort of top ten ish. You mean tenor like singer? The tenor, the yes. Top, and he's the top ten tenor. <laughs> the top, that yeah. It it's top when twenty. The the unfortunate part is I now have my Prius stereo and not my tesla stereo system so oh, the man, life is so hard uh, yeah let's upgrade that let's but i it. i feel like your car sanctification <laughs> is going in reverse <laughs> i've uh, it's been holy listening to him him sing and it, it's i'm not getting sick of it it's like and i've listened to people that are listening to this and they're responding on youtube and just people that are not christians and they start talking about how it's, they just think it's great that people get together, like family getting together, love this tradition. I love like this person was just in tears as he's going along. And um, it's just one of those singers. It's like someone who looks at a piece of art or a scene or a moment in time with their children, whatever it might be. Yeah. And you just, you're moved. And I've been moved uh, just listening to his voice. And it's, it's kind of centered me this week uh well it's been good dude that of of the christmas songs is one of the most powerful i mean both in content and in delivery like it's beautifully written and it's it's dramatic yes like there's no way that it doesn't pull on the emotional heartstrings as opposed to the unemotional heartstrings literal strings actual strings but uh Dude, I, I love that song. And there's, I love most versions of it. I'm glad that there's, there's a bunch of them. There, oh, a ton. The girl from, look up the girl from Hillsong. There's, have you seen that one? Uh, I think I came across that one. Man. Um, I that, don't know if I listened to it. That one too. Like that, that, that song is just very powerful. And I think it, 
what I love about that song in particular is that it, it I feel like does a great job of describing the human condition and like our relationship to God and, and recognizing, you know, even just when it hits that like crescendo of fall on your knees, like those, those moments are pretty powerful. It does something to my soul. It does. In a good way. Yeah. Yes. Well, it was fun. All you soulless viewers and listeners out there, thanks for listening. With that is Zach's <laughs> encouragement. Maybe listen to a holy night and gain your soul back. Uh, yeah. Well, hey, at Bros Babbles Beer on the socials, Bros Babbles Beer at gmail dot com and YouTube dot com slash Bros Babbles Beer. Like, subscribe, and smash sure. it. Share, share it. it. Share it with a friend. That's uh that's the part that we love. Like send it to someone else that you think uh would enjoy that or be interested in and it would or it would be helpful for. I think yeah. that's that's great. Helpful and maybe even we could be used as a bad example, you know. We can, you know, that's that, true. Those are good teaching elements too. So good example, bad example. Where were we wrong in our theology tonight? Yeah. Snide remarks, questions, bring it. But Appreciate it. Appreciate you guys. Thanks, Jeff, for bringing the thunder tonight. Dude, the, fight the, the good content. Fight. You Preparation. Know? Preparation H. Notes and everything. <laughs> Sorry, Preparation J. It's holy. <laughs> it's the best kind of preparation. <laughs> it was good, though. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, for the listener, most of the time we don't show up with anything uh, prepared. And so... Uh, for Jeff to come in with actual uh, things for us to think about. I take that back. Zach, you do. You do. I do nothing. Actually, Maybe that's what it comes Good to. Good save. You do stuff on you, the back end. You do which a is lot what, here. You, you usually do your best work on the back end, <laughs> if I'm honest. And I'll see you later tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't wait for Mammoth. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well. Okay. For Jeff, Zach, I'm Andy. This is Bros Bibles of Beer. Grace. Peace. Peace. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> bah, 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 bah. Round of applause.